How's it going, everybody? My name is Trevor Hubbs with the Armed Forces Initiative of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, uh, doing a tip from the field. Uh, this tip from the field is going to be a little longer, and it's going to be a little convoluted, but stick with me. I'm in the middle of prepping to take uh, 10 veterans, 10, 10 Armed Forces Initiative members uh, into the field in Alaska, about 200 miles north of the Arctic Circle to hunt caribou. We're going to be 40 miles, give or take, from the nearest road. Uh, and I'm going over my medical kit, and I'm getting a lot of questions on, Trevor, what should I have in it? Uh, why should I have it? I want to preface this. I was not a medic. I was infantry. Um, my choices here have been influenced by medics. They've been influ influenced by flight surgeons that I know and various uh, kind of backcountry medicine folks. Uh, but I, I don't claim to be a medical professional at all. I just want to tell you this is what I carry. And you're going to say, Trevor, that's overkill. You're probably right. Um, but I don't necessarily mind having the extra weight on my back just in case something happens. So let's get into it. First of all, this is a met, this medical kit is kind of like a medical kit slash survival kit, like a worst case scenario kind of deal. Um, some people don't carry that, I choose to. I'm gonna do like the survival items first over here, then I'm gonna get into more of the medical stuff. So first thing, PEC 17 panel, big old blaze panel. You could use a bandana and you use whatever you want. I had this, so that's, what I use and I carry it, especially when I'm doing work trips, uh, because when I'm doing work trips, I'm not responsible for Trevor, right? I'm not taking Trevor hunting, I'm very comfortable doing that. I'm taking 10 people hunting. And oftentimes I don't know, I've never been hunting with them before. Never been in the backcountry with them before. I don't know how prepared they're going to be. I don't know if they're gonna listen to me when I tell them what to pack, but I do know that ultimately I'm responsible for them. So if I have to get a helicopter, I have to mark a drop zone or something and really let them know where I am, PEC 17 panel. Along that same uh, same thing, I have a chem light, glow stick, whatever you want to call it. Uh, crack it, light it. It gets dark. I want to be able to mark where something is, uh, whether that's a person, whether that's gear, whether that's uh, myself. I just want to hang this in a tree. I carry one in my deer stand all the time when I hunt out east because uh, I figure if I fall out of my deer stand, I want to be able to dress the wound. And if I can't walk or something, I have an arrow through my leg. I want to hang this as high as I can get it on the chance that I pass out and can't answer when somebody's calling, right? Because I'm assuming I'm going to hit my button on my inReach. People are going to come, but they may not come for 10 hours. And I may be passed out. So glow stick, hang in a tree, mark your location in the dark, handy. Electrical tape. It's electrical tape. Got 25 feet of 550 cord. Seems like it'd probably come in handy. I've never had to use it, but anyway. Duct tape, small roll of duct tape. You'll notice I've did an, done another video where I have extra duct tape on my trekking poles, but I am uh, I'm a glutton for punishment. I carry extra weight uh, when I know I shouldn't, but I do it anyway because it's medical stuff. I'd, if I'm going to pack heavy, this is what I'm going to pack heavy on. So I've got whatever this is, 25 feet of uh, duct tape here. Lighter is just a little Bic lighter. Um, Figure worst case scenario, I'll run out of juice. I could still make spark with it. Light something on fire if I'm out there for longer than I should be. This is just a little like uh, one of those temp fly boxes you get at the store. Um, in here, I've got like, I don't know, 25, uh, not quite that much, probably 12 feet of line. Uh, a couple flies, a couple uh, little tiny mini spoons, just random shit. I've got grasshoppers, I've got squirmy wormies, I've got some hooks, like just bear hooks. And that is, uh, one, well, sometimes I like to just fish while I'm elk hunting. If I cross a little mountain stream and you see some fish in there, a lot of times, like, that's legal to go where I hunt. It's legal to go try and catch some fish. Tie some string onto a willow branch or something and impromptu fly rod. Get after it. Um, it's a little heavy, honestly, but we're talking ounces. I'm, I, I'm not worried about it. That's my kind of survival stuff. Next, we're going to get into the medical stuff, starting with what I think is the most important but I'm sure somebody's going to correct me on, well, that's not important, or oh, blah, blah, blah. that's fine. Mo most important piece to me, tourniquets. I have two tourniquets. Again, I'm not there for myself. I am there for a multitude of people, some of which I don't know, um, but I'm not assuming everyone is going to pack a tourniquet like I tell them to. So I carry one tourniquet. This one's all wrapped up real small. I always have it on my person, normally on my vinyl harness, like within reach all times. And then I have uh, another tourniquet, um, they're actually the same brand. This one is just, this one is like four years old, and this one's like six months old. Just bought this one. Um, Orion Medical Consulting, by the way, out of Wisconsin. Uh, former flight medic, 160th SOAR guy, like knows his shit, all made in America. 
Orion Medical Consulting, uh, social media guy. I'll put a link in the in the chat or something. Sponsor, good guy. But anyway, two tourniquets, one in the pack, one always on me. Most important thing that we've learned in the past 20 years of war is you have got to stop the bleeding. Medical science, like if you hit your, your emergency button on your inReach or your Garmin or whatever uh, emergency beacon you have, someone's coming to come get you. You just have to stop the bleeding long enough to stay alive to get to that helicopter, get to that rescue team to get you out. Um, same in, same that we've learned in war, like stop the bleeding. We will deal with the side effects later. Like you rarely ever lose a limb due to a tourniquet you're putting on. That's not a, uh, it's just not necessarily a thing anymore. I don't know the exact specs, but, uh, I've been told by people that are smarter than me, don't worry about it. If you cannot stop the bleeding with a, with a bandage or it's arterial bleeding, like spurting, throw that tourniquet on two inches or, uh, put it above the wound or two inches above the joint. Again, medical people, listen to your doctor, listen to whoever you are. There's a lot of people smarter than me, but don't be afraid to throw that tourniquet on. Next thing, uh, I've got quick clot bleeding control dressing. Uh, quick clot, sorry. Uh, this is an older one. I've got like a newer one here, but uh, I only carry one of them on me at a time. I just kind of grabbed all my medical stuff because I'm in the process of putting my medical kit together. Uh, I know some people like vacuum seal their medical kits and then they never touch them and it stays the same all season. I don't really do that. I take mine apart and I build it back together every hunt um, or at least every few hunts. The reason I do that is uh, a lot of times I use some of this stuff, like especially the little stuff like the duct tape and uh, the lighters or a glow stick, just something. I end up using it and I want to keep it refreshed. Anyway, quick clot, kind of uh, whatever, bleeding control dressings for when you don't need a tourniquet, but you do want to stop the uh, stop the bleeding pretty quick. Then again, I only carry one of these, but... Uh, I didn't want to show you this package because it's all like crumbly, whereas this one's kind of new. So this is like a, a chest seal pack. It's like sticky plastic, essentially. Um, you just wipe all the debris off. You got like an arrow through the chest. You got a punctured lung, something like that. And you just big saran wrap over the top there. You can create like a flutter valve. It's, it's good for like an exit wound. I mean, gunshot. I've never been around a gunshot on any of these hunting trips. Knock on wood. Next, I've got these kind of trauma bandages. They're basically just like tight sealed gauzes. Um, that's not right. They're not gauzes. It's, it's a wrap. You put that uh, quick clot on the wound, you wrap this thing up with it, stop the bleeding without putting a tourniquet on. Uh, I have two of them here. I'm not sure why I have two of them, but I, I actually have gone to the field with two of them. Probably only need the one. Super glue. Uh, this is more for like small cuts. Um, rather than carry bandages, cause I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sweaty dude. I'm a bigger fella. Uh, if I put a bandage on my finger or on my toes, like I'm going to get sweaty and it's going to fall off and I don't like it. I would rather just take the time, super glue the wound shut, and uh, maybe put some duct tape over it to help hold it together. But uh, anyway, super glue. What else do we have here? Oh, we have some, what do they call it? Mole skin or like anti blister stuff. I just carry a little patch. Um, I've gotten blisters, but I, I'm, I'm one of the believers that uh, you're in charge of whether you get blisters or not. Do the proper footwork prior. Uh, I actually just got done with a ruck around my neighborhood where I soaked my boots with water before I went. Part of that is breaking your boots, but I think a bigger part of it is just toughening up your feet. You could be in good shape, but if your feet aren't tough, if you don't have the calluses built in the right areas, you don't have that mental toughness built, like you're not going to have a good time. But anyway, moleskin, I carry it. Next thing is a SAM splint. Uh, so I've recently been talked into carrying one of these. It's big, it's flexible, you fold it around like, I mean, this isn't, it's not as good as a cast, obviously, but you're going to fold it around the leg or you're going to like fold it around your, your arm at the elbow. And then you wrap that uh, that bandage around it. You can wrap the 550 cord, but you're kind of just immobilizing it. Um, yeah, Sam Splint, pretty great. Not necessarily an expensive item. And uh, it's bigger, you can see, but collapses down pretty good. And uh, I haven't found that it takes up too much space. Next, I have uh, an assortment of, like, this is like a personal medicine uh, that I take for um, a kidney transplant stuff that I just... I need, so I have it in there in case I were to lose the stuff that I pack normally. I have some backups. Roll aids, because I get heartburn because I'm old and fat. Oh, nasal decongestant. Never want to be sick in the woods, and you want to be able to breathe good at night, especially at altitude. So I have a couple nasal decongestants, just like wall fed, I think. Whatever the cheapest one is you get at Walmart. And uh, pop a couple of them before you go to bed. Get a good night's sleep. Make sure you're, you're feeling as right as you can be. Because uh, you don't want that cold to force you out of the, the woods. Same thing when I've got here some Mucinex. Maximum strength, Mucinex nighttime. This is, uh, oh, this is a modium. 
modium, big deal. Uh, drink some bad water or you just get the bubble gut, a modium, take one, still goes, take two. Um, been on a couple antelope hunts with a buddy that uh, was just dragging his ass across the prairie. Felt bad for him. But uh, modium, put it in your pack because you don't want to shit your pants in the mountains. And that's, uh, that goes through my survival slash first aid kit. Again, I haven't really had to use it for anything other than small cuts, blisters, uh, mini sprains, things like that. But knock, knock on wood, but that doesn't mean I don't want to be prepared, especially for a trip like Alaska. Uh, immediately coming home from Alaska, we've got an elk hunt in Montana. We're going to be pretty remote for, so I'm going to want to make sure I have it there. But uh, that's what I've got. Drop some comments. Tell me how messed up I am. But uh, if you don't know anything, this is better than nothing. Thanks. <laughs>